Hey guys, welcome to today's video. It's Dan here with MA Performance and I actually got a, a new face for you all here today. Going to tell you exactly what you need to know about choosing the right clutch for your car. So I'd like to welcome Charlie on the team. He is new here. He's definitely a car enthusiast just like you guys are. And he's going to be the face of MA Performance now on the YouTube channel. So get used to him, get settled here and let's listen to what he has to say about choosing the right clutch for your car. All right, you guys, uh, what's going on? Again, my name is Charlie. I am also a fellow enthusiast just like you guys. Um, I'm gonna be taking over a lot of the videos here at MA Performance. So i um, real excited to bring you guys some awesome content about all the different car parts we offer to the market. So today I'm here to talk to you guys about that third pedal, the clutch. Today's video, we're gonna cover all the things you'll need to know so that you can pick the right clutch for your build. So stick around because in today's video, we're gonna cover clutch disc options, plate differences, sprung versus unsprung, pressure plates, flywheels, and choosing the right clutch setup. So at some point, you're gonna need a new clutch, right? Whether you're upgrading the one you have or the one that you have is completely worn out, it's gonna need to be replaced. Clutch kits typically have two main parts, right? The pressure plate and the clutch or friction disc or plate. We're gonna go with clutch disc just for consistency. Now, as we said, this plate does exactly what the name implies. It provides the friction or lack thereof when disengaged to your flywheel. You should know what different clutch disc materials are and what exactly they mean for you. The friction material applied to the clutch disc is a critical component of how the disc will perform. This material has a drastic effect on how harsh the clutch will engage and the amount of holding power it has. So organic material is going to be best for a street application, right? So this is going to be great for people with um, a stock uh, STI, for example, and your clutch goes out and you need to replace it. There are OEM replacement options that are going to be a little bit more affordable and the best clutch for your build. So the next option is going to be a Kevlar material. Now this is also going to be great for a street application, but it's for people with a more modified car, right? So if your car is stage one, stage Stage two, um, you might be looking for more of a Kevlar clutch for your build. So next we have centered iron. Now this is going to work in a heavily modified streetcar, uh, but probably more or less somebody who's you know entry level into the racing community, um, as this is going to be best for a vehicle with really high torque. Uh, and last but not least, we have centered bronze. Okay, now this is definitely for people who are going full race mode. If you are someone who's heavily into autocross or drag racing, this is the kind of clutch that you're going to be looking for for your build. So now next we have the difference between a full face, a three, a four, and a six puck clutch disc. First, we have one of the more common kinds of clutches in a stock or OE replacement kind of clutch, um, and that's gonna be a full face clutch. Um, it's exactly as it sounds, it has a full face, there's no breaks in the material, um, and it has a much more smooth engagement. And again, it's rated for a lower torque vehicle. Next, we have a six puck clutch disc. Now, this is gonna have a slightly less surface area, but it's rated for a higher torque rating. It's gonna have a lot more violent engagement, and you might even be able to feel some chatter as you engage the clutch. And the six puck clutch disc is going to have a lot longer lasting life um, than the next types of clutches we're gonna talk about. And we also have a three and a four puck clutch disc. Now these are gonna have a lot less life than the six puck clutch disc, and it's gonna have a much more aggressive engagement um, and be a lot more aggressive on your transmission. And now these are definitely not recommended for street use. These are only, in our opinion, for people who are going full send in race mode. Next, there are two different types of clutches, uh, sprung and unsprung or solid center, depending on what you know it as. The sprung version is the most common of the two, and the springs are actually used to absorb that initial shock from the engine as you engage the clutch. And then the unsprung version or the solid center is the uh, less common of the two, and you will see those more common in racing applications as they are typically a lot stronger, and also this will make a quicker reacting clutch. Next up is the pressure plate. Now the pressure plate is what applies pressure to the clutch disc and keeps that tight to the flywheel. These will come with different tension springs and also different engagement finger designs. 
The diaphragm design, like the one you'll see here, is more commonly seen in street or uh, less modified race applications. Next, we have the Borg and Beck design. Uh, this is more commonly found in racing applications, and it does require a significant amount of foot pressure. Lastly, we have the long style engagement finger design. Those are definitely found in racing application. They are preferred for competition style. These have heavier springs, which are gonna allow for more holding power or for more torque. Another very important part of your new clutch setup is a flywheel. The flywheel, much like a brake rotor, creates a friction surface for the clutch disc to engage against. The weight of the flywheel can also have a drastic effect on how the clutch performs. Uh, heavier flywheels are used in more street and drag racing. Uh, their weight keeps RPMs during shifts, whereas a lighter weight flywheel, such as an aluminum flywheel, as designed for oval track, road racing, and lighter weight drag cars. This makes the engine's RPMs react much quicker and will make the engine rev much faster as well. Dual mass flywheels are known to increase driver comfort due to vibration and shock absorption. However, under heavy load or spirited driving, these are known to fail. Compatibility between the pressure plate and the flywheel is often overlooked. You need to make sure your pressure plate will have the same bolt pattern as some are not accepted. Uh, typical aftermarket flywheels offer multiple bolt patterns and these will allow you to upgrade to aftermarket clutch kits. Now we do also have a few other things that you're gonna to wanna to consider when you're replacing your clutch. Um, some things are just easier to replace while you're already down there and have everything taken apart. One of the things that you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration is replacing your throwout bearing. This is one of those things that's often overlooked, but definitely necessary. The pilot bearing and flywheel bolts are also some things you're gonna to wanna to consider when replacing your new clutch, as they're also necessary for installation. Lastly, we want to make sure that you know the differences between a single disc clutch and a twin disc clutch. Uh, all the clutches that we were referring to and the way we were speaking about them before is in the single disc application. A uh, twin disc clutch has lower inertia and higher torque because it can actually spread the load out over more surfaces. Uh, because they have a smaller diameter than the single disc, there's actually less pedal effort to operate the clutch. Now that you know the different types of clutches that are available and the different types of materials and options you have, what's next, right? So in order to select the right clutch, you need to know how you use your car, right? Is it a daily or is it a race car? For personal use, we recommend aftermarket clutch kits and OE parts. Uh, typically, they're less expensive than dealer options and OE clutch parts are tested to roughly 100,000 miles. It's a great option if you plan on keeping the car. Do not get cheap Chinese parts, right? They may be cheaper, but installing a clutch is not an easy task. You'll save your wallet and your back in the long run. So now next is the moderately modified car. Um, so you've increased the uh, power of your car to reach your horsepower and torque goals. Your OEM clutch will hold for a little bit, but sooner or later it's gonna start slipping and you're going to need something that can meet these demands. For this type of application, a stage two or stage three clutch is a great replacement and will retain that OE clutch pedal feel and effort. And lastly is the heavily modified and uh, track or spirited driving usage. For this application, the clutch will most likely be getting engaged or disengaged often and often during times of much higher strain and often with more power. In this instance, a stage four or five clutch may be required. These types of kits including a pressure plate with higher clamp loads and extreme duty ceramic buttons. Do not just assume that the higher stage of the clutch, the better it'll be for your car, because a stage five clutch in a stock car is going to have an extremely hard pedal and it'll feel very abrupt during engagement. Clutches need to match the torque output and specific usage of your vehicle. All right, you guys, that is a wrap on this video about clutches. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you'd like to teach us a thing or two, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, please like and subscribe for future videos like this one. Um, and as always, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.